Hello everyone, welcome back to Ms. Bookshelf. Today we're going to go over my final reading for the month of June. So for this video, I will not be showing books. I will have pictures pop up because honestly, I am not feeling well. And you can see that in my vlog that I'm currently filming, but I will quickly show you the two books which I did promise I would show before. So of the two books that I will be showing, um, I have read in June, uh, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and Prince Caspian. So I promised I'd show these covers and I really wanted to still. So I really love that one and this one. So for these two, I gave them uh, five stars for The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and four stars for Prince Caspian. I love The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. It is a favorite of mine. This one, I always love rereading. I love the story. I love the characters. I love seeing the sibling dynamic. I am one of four kids myself, so I love seeing that as I read. I love the characters in the world. I love Aslan. I have Aslan as a tattoo. I just, I love Lion from the Wardrobe. So I gave this one five stars as always. For Prince Caspian, I give this one four stars. I really enjoyed this one. I really loved the reread as well. However, I do struggle a little bit with how it's told. I feel like it would benefit from being not so much like in history because a lot of it is told with um, it being kind of told by Trumpkin the dwarf instead of us experiencing with Prince Caspian during the time it's happening. So that's kind of my only complaint, but I do really enjoy Prince Caspian as a book and this is a great start to the series. So I am excited that uh, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader will be next and then with The Silver Chair. I will start those though after the live show as I don't want to confuse in my brain what I can talk about during the live show um, or like message in because I'm not on the live show but I would like to message in my thoughts and I don't want to spoil anything so I'm waiting until after the live show to uh, discuss or to read the next two. I also read several bible books. I read Song of Solomon, Ecclesiastes, and Proverbs. Uh, Proverbs comes first of the three. It goes Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon I think but I read them all in one day. I didn't read anywhere else uh, any more bible books in the month but all of them were interesting, all of them were poetry and more uh, wisdom and Song of Solomon is definitely like poetry, it's a love letter to um, a young woman from Solomon or from a lover and I thought it was really interesting to read as an adult since I don't, don't think I have actually. But yeah, really interesting and happy that I am now starting Isaiah. I did make a dedicated vlog about the next five books, so I will direct you to there if you want more dedicated and more thought out uh, reviews or synopsis of this. So the first one was Cults, and this one is by Max Cutler. Um, this is a nonfiction about different cults in the world, and it just talks about several different uh cults that mostly happen in the U.S., but some of them are international, and also like how the leader was born, raised, and what impacted him or her. In one case, there's a woman, um, which was very fascinating in Africa. I can't remember which country. I think it might have been Ethiopia. Anyways, um, it was very interesting to read about these people who led cults and how they gathered a following and how the cults were all different in certain ways or how they were similar very interesting and how it just went either down in fire or how um, the people stayed with it. It was really interesting and I really recommend reading Cults. I gave it four stars. The only complaint that I had was that the chapters were really long and I like shorter chapters because the chapters were one giant chapter about the whole cult and I would have preferred broken up chapters about each cult. I also read Fake It Till You Bake It. It's by Jamie Wesley and I really enjoyed this one. I gave it four stars. It's a romance with a football player and a baking shop and a set with a character who was on the Bachelorette equivalent or the Bachelor equivalent and she turned down the guy after she basically made it to the end. And it's just so cute, a fake dating trope and all of the things just worked perfectly. I can't give a book like that five stars because I don't read the sex scenes, but I do think it's a really interesting, really well done book. And I really enjoyed how they did the trope of fake dating. Highly recommend Fake It Till You Bake It. English Myths by Michael Kerrigan is another arc that I had in this and that one was a four star as well. It follows a lot of different uh, English myths. It wasn't as in depth as a lot of things are, but I think that's okay because 
it's not meant to be that way. It's like a 200 page book and it is about different uh, legends like Robin Hood or King Arthur or Beowulf and how those became to be. It also goes over how different events in history impacted uh, English myths and how those like the Vikings would have impacted. So I thought it was really interesting and I really enjoyed reading about the English mythology. I also read For the Love of the Bar by Jessica Martin. This one I gave three stars to. I just was too uh, unfocused for me, too cluttered almost, I wanna say, with too many plot lines. But I found it to be really fun and I loved Shakespeare. I've read all of his work and now that I've read all of his work, I was able to catch a lot of puns. I really enjoyed how cheesy it was. And this is not a book for someone who wants like a very serious uh, Shakespeare retelling, because it's not. It's it set in a town that loves Shakespeare. And it's about someone who's directing a Shakespeare play and how they live in a town that literally has town names, like the two gentlemen of Daytona or um, Taming of the Shoe, or they have streets that are named after these like Shakespeare places. It is so well done. And I loved so much about the town, but I felt like the plot was not well developed enough for me to give it a four or five stars. So I do recommend it if you love Shakespeare and you love cheesy romance, or if you just love cheesy Shakespeare and you just want to enjoy a good book that loves Shakespeare. Highly recommend For the Love of the Bard for those reasons. I found it to be very easy to read and very fast paced. So it's not something that's hard to read at, any, at all. And I think it's uh, well worth it if you enjoy that side of the literary love of a very prominent literary figure. I actually have the next book right beside me, so I'll just pick it up. This one is My Body's Not Prerocus by Amy Kenny. I gave this one five stars. This one's a nonfiction about disability justice and the church. It is also a lot about disability justice and the normal world. So it's something that you could read definitely for that aspect. As Amy Kenny has to be in a wheelchair for often, as she can walk, but it's very difficult often. So she has to have a wheelchair or a cane, depending on how her energy is per day. So it's interesting to have her perspective on that and also to have her perspective on how church buildings are designed and how the church responds to people with disabilities. So I thought it was very powerful, thoroughly loved this. I think everyone who wants to learn about disability justice or anyone who wants to help disabilities in the church or every church leader should read something like this or this in order to know how to best improve their church to help those and include those who are all of, of all abilities. And I'm not saying that they are differently abled because that term annoys me to death. Um, I have a disability, and like this book says, um, disability justice, and I think that's something that's really powerful in this book. I also read two Agatha Christie's, so I read Appointment with Death. This one is a Poirot novel about a family who goes to the Middle East, and they're going on a vacation of sorts. However, the mother is awful. She is verbally abusive with her children. She is, and these are grown children, like these are 20 somethings and they are uh, very mistreated. They have been cowed into acting this way. It's a very traumatic situation for the people involved for the family. And then they are meeting other people on this vacation and they realize that the world is bigger than they think um, or they thought before. Also on this vacation, they happen to go to a certain uh, far out of the way place and the mother dies. And of course, Hercule Poirot happens to be nearby and he's trying to investigate what happens, but he only has 24 hours to figure it out. Uh, found this one really enjoyable. I gave it four stars. I thought it was very interesting and in how it was told. I did pinpoint the who, what wasn't pretty early on, um, which isn't a bad thing in Agatha Christie, but I did think it was kind of obvious. And the big reveal, I knew right away when it happened, like the big clue, I was like, that's, that's really key. So I uh, definitely think that it's a well-deserved book, but I did spot early on certain elements. So it's getting a four star. It didn't blow me away, but I highly recommend uh, Appointment with Death. It sounds very interesting, but it is something that if you have had a very uh, traumatic relationship with a parent or a family member, like verbally abusive or anything like that, emotionally abusive, you might want to steer away from this one. I also read a short story of Miss Marple, and that is Miss Marple Tells a Story. Um, this is just where she tells a short story about how she basically uh, was told about how a man was accused of murdering his wife. And she gets told the entire facts and what 
the result could be. Um, she figures out the end result. I figured it out with her and I felt really proud of myself this month for my Agatha Christie results. And I was very happy with this one. I gave it a four star as well. The last book that I read was Ripley Underground. This one's by Patricia Highsmith and this one is the second book in the Ripley series. I really enjoyed this one. I felt like I have not read Ripley for so long. I read Ripley, Talented Mr. Ripley, uh, so long ago, years ago, that I didn't need a refresher, but at the same time I was like, okay, I gotta take a second to get into the world. But it was really interesting to read about Ripley again, Mr. Ripley as he Tom, as he is going into more trouble, he's now successful, um, but things are going on and it's just, he's not changed from his first experiences in book one. I thought it was very good and I really enjoyed learning about how he got out of struggles, how he had to maneuver himself into situations and how he had to uh, defend his assets will say. I think it was interesting and I'm really excited to continue on with this series. I really need to prioritize that because this book reminded me of why I enjoyed book one so much because it was so weird to have a morally gray villainous person be the person we're following. Um, definitely an interesting one and I really enjoyed it. So if you've enjoyed book one of the series, you should definitely read it. There is a movie out about the first book and if you have watched it or you are interested after that, you should check out the books. I think they're good. So that's it for the books that I read in the second half of the month of June. I did read a lot, but at the same time, it didn't feel, I don't know. It didn't feel like a lot at the time, uh, but I did do the whole week vlog of doing um, my arcs. And then I kind of had a crash burn where I just kind of read a little, but not much. And I was okay with that. So overall, I had a good reading month and a good reading time with all the books. I enjoyed them and I am very happy with how things turned out. So please let me know down below what you read for June and if you enjoyed your books. If you didn't, let me know all things book related down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.